How's it going? Doing a bit of a clip on root knot nematodes and controlling them using French marigolds today. I've posted a clip previously on trying to combat these guys but using neem oil. Uh, the azadictarin in neem is apparently a very good nemicide, but unfortunately whether I got the levels wrong or whatever, it didn't really work that well for us. So I'm trying a more traditional and a more accessible option for people. Um, using French marigolds. These guys grow really easily, the seeds really easy to collect. Uh, I posted a bit of a clip on how to save the seeds as well, so they are a very cost effective way to try and look after the root knot nematode, so I'm going to give them a shot. I've actually been told by my uncle who's been gardening for years, get Uncle Cole, um, he's actually pretty much all controlling a very bad nematode outbreak in his garden he had a couple of years ago using these guys. So. What he does is grow them to about a foot tall or 30 centimetres tall, cuts them down and then digs them through the soil and as they compost the active constituents in the leaves will act as a fumigant and kill off the nematodes. Um, Jerry Colby Williams from Gardening Australia has also recommended that as being a treatment to try and get these guys out of the soil as well. So how the nematodes actually affect the plant is the female will burrow into the root and she'll create those little knobby galls that you see on the roots of plants. She has her young, the young are then released into the soil, they reproduce, finds another root, creates another gall, and it's just a process that goes on and on and on and on. As it's feeding from the roots, it's taking away from the nutrients that the plant would normally use to make fruit or leaves, and it's basically killing the plant. The ochre in the plant in the barrel, sorry, behind me actually was killed by the nematodes, we think. The roots were just that gnarly, there was no way that plant was going to survive. The other okras in other beds were still doing fine at the same time, it had water, it had fertiliser. I think just oh, the massive nematode galls on the roots just did it in, in the end. Getting on to how the French marigolds actually take care of the nematodes, they're an allopathic plant which means they release chemicals via the roots. And the chemical they release that looks after these guys is called alpha tothionyl. It's a toxin that will kill the nematodes. Unfortunately, the nematodes will also run from where this chemical is and they'll go set up shop in a different part of your garden. We're really lucky because we grow in closed systems. We grow in wicking beds and they're basically a reservoir with soil on top within a closed off garden bed. The soil doesn't mingle with other gardens or the lawn or anywhere else in the yard. So it is a closed system. Hopefully, if we can knock them on the head using the marigolds, we won't have a reoccurrence within our garden beds. As long as we don't bring them in by um, contaminating the soil with infected soil from purchased plants or soil on tools that we've used elsewhere in the yard that may have nematodes. The way I see it, there's two ways you can go about it. You can basically plant every plant in your garden with some marigolds around it and hopefully that will keep the nematodes at bay from the plant you actually want to grow and eat. Problem with that is the marigolds are going to grow, they're going to use water, they're going to use nutrients and yeah, you're basically going to be depriving the plants you're growing for food and sustenance from nutrients and water and they won't be producing as well as they could if they were just left on their own. The other way I see it is you just do a rotational system like I'm trying to do with this barrel here and some other beds later on in the year. Plant them out densely with marigolds, dig them through the soil and then yeah, away you go. They'll compost down, they'll break down, fumigate the soil, then you can grow your, your next crop over the top. If you're in an open garden system, you might have to do that every couple of years, maybe grow a, a crop of marigolds through there and yeah fumigate the soil that way then grow your next crop a food crop over that. Along with the marigolds there are a couple other plants that you can use. Another one a member of the same family is called Taggart's Minuta. I think I've pronounced that right I'm not too sure. It's a tall plant it's also called a uh, black mint and we also call it uh, stinking roger over here. It it's grows fairly tall about five foot plus if you let it grow that tall. It has a very unique sweet sort of smell to it. You grow it the same way as you do the the um, French marigolds for fumigating the soil, you grow it to about 30-40 centimetres tall, just a bit over a foot, chop it down, mulch it through the soil, dig it through the soil and it fumigates the soil that way. The snow pea bed behind me, I'm going to use Stinking Roger, the seeds I got from Deb, I'm going to grow and put through that bed there once the snow peas finish. Another plant you can use is mustard greens. I'm actually growing a fairly large crop of the purple, I think it's Osaka mustard greens in the IBC bed behind the chook pen. We had some wing beans in there this year and they were just totally decimated by um, 
the root knot nematodes. I used neem in there to try and control it and molasses last year didn't do the job so I'm growing mustard greens in there. Going to dig them through and we'll see how they go. There's also a couple of marigolds in there as well but the bulk of it is just mainly a carpet of the mustard greens. They should be dug through the same way, you let them get to about 30 centimetres tall, dig them through the soil, should fumigate them and kill the nematodes. So doing a few different methods but I'm fairly sure that each of them will work, we'll just see how well and we'll compare them at the end of the season. So what I'll do now is we'll pull some of these marigolds out and we'll have a look at their roots and also the tomatoes in the barrel behind me, we'll have a look at their roots and see if we can see any nematodes. So this is the barrel here and as you can see I've pretty much all left it go a little bit too far. Uh, you don't need the plants to actually flower before you dig them, mow them down, mulch them up and dig them through the soil. All you need is the greenery. It's the constituents, the, the chemicals in the leaves when they break down that actually do the job. I don't mind burying the flowers as well though. It's all organic matter and the, plant, the barrel's going to love it. In here as well I've also planted some mustard greens. Jackie French over here in Australia actually recommends them over marigolds but I'm planting both and we'll be digging both through. But as you can see it's rather a spectacular barrel and it smells really nice. So I'll pull one of these marigolds now, we'll have a look at the roots and also one of these tomatoes, probably that small one there, he looks a bit stunted from over the back and see if we can see any sign of nematode damage on the roots at all. So here we go, first cab off the rank is the marigold. I'm just going to dip him in some water here and see if I can wash all that soil off. So what we're looking for is a telltale little lumps and galls on the roots. I can't actually see any there so that, that tells me either the nematodes are in there and are dead, killed by the plants, or they never got in there in the first place. So there we go. I'll just have to pull out the tomato now and we'll have a look at it. So this is the roots from the tomato plant and the only nodules I can find are on this root here. Down the end there we have the telltale gall of an infection or a nematode and up here as well just at the junction of where that fine root comes off the main root there there's another little telltale gall forming actually and there's some, some small ones happening over here as well so obviously there's still nematodes in this bed but this is nowhere near as bad as the other plants that have come out of this bed previously so I'm going to pull a mustard plant and we'll check out the roots on the mustard plant as well just to be thorough and I've had a good look through that and I can't see any galls whatsoever now brassicas are actually supposed to be one of the nematode resistant crops uh, that's why I planted broccoli and cauliflower out in so many beds this season hopefully they will starve the nematodes out so there we go I, I can't see any on there whatsoever no little galls no little bumps or lumps so there we go so it's actually pretty impressive what I saw there it looks like the roots have actually released the alpha to final and knocked those guys on the head so I think that because we've got wicking beds we're extremely lucky in that respect that I can just mass plant these guys out, the marigolds, and hopefully it should knock the nematodes on the head. Those few small ones on the tomato plant I saw there, they are something to be concerned about but I think that once I dig these marigolds and the, the few mustards that are in there through, hopefully, um, hopefully we should be able to fumigate the soil enough that we'll knock all the nematodes on the head. I'm actually going to be playing with fire and the next plant to go into this barrel is going to be an eggplant. Charles, thank you Charles, sent me down a whole heap of eggplant seeds from up north where he lives and I'm going to try one or two of them in this barrel and we'll see how they go. Just from past experiences I know that eggplants get absolutely hammered by nematodes um, like the tomatoes and the cucubits so but for now I'm fairly happy that yeah these marigolds are actually doing uh, what people have said they're going to do. Um, funny that. So I'm not going to bother about using the molasses or the neem oil again. I'm pretty much all sold on using these French marigolds just from what I've seen in this one little experiment. So the big benefit with these guys that I see is that you're providing your own seed. I mean one plant, all, this, all these plants in here came from one plant. The plant still has seed heads on it. I've given seed heads away, probably about three or four dozen seed heads away to different people. Planted them all through the yard. So one plant can generate thousands of new plants. Also too, you're chopping it down, you're digging it through the bed, you're creating more organic matter which is going to build up the soil profile in your bed and yeah that's got to be a bonus as well. So 
pretty much all sold on using these guys from now on. Also too, the mustard. The mustard, I can see the same thing, with the same benefit. So anyway, I'll pretty much will leave it there. I'll stop rabbiting on. I'm like, I'm very happy, very chuffed with the way this is all gone. So if you do have any comments, questions, suggestions, just drop them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. Other than that, I hope you all have a great one and take it easy. Catch ya.